Hello, everyone. In this module, we'll talk about statistical process control. Statistical process control. It's an application of statistical techniques to determine whether a process is delivering what the customer wants. The first question is, when can we use statistical process control? I want to take an example. Let's say you are running a coffee shop. And one of the most popular drinks in your coffee shop is latte. How do you make a latte? You make you warm up milk and you pour it into espresso. The taste of your latte depends on how much milk you're using. To get the right taste, you need to use the right amount of milk. How can you make sure you're using the right amount of milk? Before you serve your latte, you can measure the weight of your latte, and if it weighs less than a target weight, say six ounces, then you throw this out and make another latte. That way, you can keep the high quality of, it, of your latte. This leads to the following question. What happens if the actual weight is less than six, say 5.9 or 5.99? It's less than six, but it's close to six. Would you accept it or would you throw this out? What's the range of acceptable quality? Also, does this mean there is a serious problem in your process? Or does this indicate that uh, you know expression machine is not working properly or one of your workers is not trained properly or uh, there's some error in your process? To answer this, we're gonna use something called a control chart. This is a basic form of a control chart. The x-axis is every hour. This is the first operation, the first hour of operation, this is the second hour of operation, etc. The y-axis can be several things. In our example, the y value can be the sample mean. So here's how it works. In the first hour, we're gonna sample a few latte. We'll measure the weight of each latte that's sampled, and we'll compute the average of these weights. And that's the sample mean in the first hour. And we plot this on the x on the y-axis. In the next hour, again, we sample a few latte. We measure the weight of each latte that's selected, and we compute the average of these weights. And that's the sample mean in the second hour. And we repeat this for the rest of the time periods. Remember, we are not going to measure the weight of all the lattes we produce. We'll sample a few of them every hour, and we compute the average weight. And once we plot all the average weights, we'll see if they are within the range of acceptable quality. So we have something called the upper control limit and the lower control limit. And if the average weights are within these limits, that means there is no problem in our process. The process is in control. But if one or more of these sample means are beyond the limits, like this, that means there is some error in this process. The espresso machine may not be working properly, or one of the workers may not be trained properly, or there can be many other reasons. So the process is out of control. The key question we're gonna discuss in the rest of this chapter is how to compute this upper control limit and the lower control limit. And we're going to use some formulas to compute these quantities. Now, if we look at these sample means, no two sample means are identical. We, we always see variations over time. So we can categorize these variations into two groups. First, common causes are intrinsic to the process and will always be there even if there is no problem in the process. Examples can be background noise and normal wear and tear. Next, assignable causes uh, are beyond the 
beyond what we should tolerate in the usual course of events. Examples can be breakdown of machines, human errors, or defective raw materials. And SPC uh, procedures are concerned with detecting this type of causes. This is also called special causes. Here is the general structure of control charts. On the x-axis, we have every hour. On the y-axis, we have measurements we took from our process. It can be the sample mean, the sample range, or the sample proportion. It depends on what type of data set we have. Now we also have the upper control limit and the lower control limit and the center line. The center line is the target value. Next, we plot the measurements over time. And if the, all, all the measurements are within uh, the limits, then we conclude the process is in control. If one or more of these measurements are outside the limits, we conclude the process is out of control. Out of control means there is a special cause that creates this kind of variation, and we need to find out what caused this variation and fix the problem.